Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alconin. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. We got a sell-off here this morning, Joel. I know you always get excited when the market's down. We're down 7.5 here, 15.05. It's been a basically, uh, we started selling off at 3 o'clock yesterday, and we have just continued to sell off here. Yeah, we were talking about it uh, near the close yesterday, and after the close, uh, the ball got rolling, I think, with um, those institutional sell orders uh, at the end of the month. Yeah, we had a lot of end of the month selling, lots of sell imbalances at the close. That was why the stock started to come down around 2.30, 3 o'clock, as those imbalances become more public information. They're posted publicly at 3.45, and a lot of stocks closed very weak. If you bring up a chart on Goldman Sachs, actually, it sold off over a dollar in the last 15 minutes yesterday um, so you had a lot of stocks that were closing very weak obviously we have some nervous institutions possibly with the sequester deadline uh, was coming up um, and obviously uh, maybe they were sitting on some gains for the year and just wanted to lock some profits in because you had a lot of institutional sell orders on the close right and uh, they got satisfied uh, what uh, is a little bit surprising here is that you know the follow through with those large selling balances yep. uh, usually there's a little bit of a, a, a reverse yep. you know, a little, uh, and uh, there hasn't been any in fact uh, Goldman Sachs is down another buck 68 this morning uh, we do have a, a small blurb up on the uh, up on the site uh, citing this all critical 14671 71 level. Uh, that's the low that you had on Tuesday. You had a nice little rebound. Um, that also coincides with the low here that you had at 146.62. Uh, we're still a buck and a half away from that, but uh, you people that are uh, playing it from the short side, uh, keep an eye on that 146.70 level. That's a big number, too, because if you go back on to February the 4th, we had a low of 146.61. So you basically have like a double bottom. Um, on the pre-market info website, we're doing a stock of the day now, which we've been posting, Goldman Sachs, a stock of the day. Joel citing that critical level. If it takes that out, uh, it's not pretty for Goldman. So it needs to hold that. I don't see it doing that today. Obviously, it needs to go down another dollar and a half to get down there. But I a level to be aware of. Uh, lots of other weakness we're seeing in the overall S&P. Apple down here again, Joel, down three Wait, before bucks. we go into Apple, yep. what, about my, what about my Dow rant? Oh, yeah, you wanted to rant on the Dow. Joel was saying how they've been talking on CNBC, how the Dow's approaching and was getting almost up there to a new all-time high. Start your rant. This is this is why you have to follow the S and P's and my S and P numbers and not care about the Dow Jones Industrial at all. We'll bring up the okay. Dow Jones Industrial average while we talk about it. If you can. Okay, that's a good idea. Do, 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 do. Uh, first of all, okay, let's take into account here. As Joel that... tries to figure out the symbol. Yeah. This is how much we care about the Dow Jones Industrial average. We don't even know the symbol. Oh, yeah, it's dollar I N D U try. There we go. There we okay, go. we got to we got to look at it though from uh, a longer term perspective here, a real long term perspective. Okay. We'll go to the give us a feel. Here. Give us a feel. Oh boy, we have to go back to 2007 when we had the highs here. Uh, back, you know, got up near the 14,000 level. But what what they're not mentioning here is how much the Dow has changed in that time. Yeah. All right. Here are the stocks that have been added: Chevron, Bank America. Kraft, Travelers, and Cisco. Okay, pretty good stocks. What's been taken out is Altria and Honeywell. Okay, those stocks have done pretty well too. But what else has been taken out is basically three bankrupt companies. Well, well actually, you know, GM went bankrupt. went bankrupt. And AIG and C, you know, Citigroup, uh, basically went to zero. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. how can they make this comparison that the market is back at all-time high? You need to file a broad-based index like the S&Ps. Yeah, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, just such a poor index. So many people talk about it all the time. I think it's got the big number. It's got the history behind it. But it only tracks 30 stocks. It does not represent the broad representation that the S&P futures do. And that's why on the show here, we never even bring up the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's a useless indice. You really need to look at the S&P. It's a nice broad indice. Uh, and, and also the Dow Jones Industrial Average is price-based, where if a stock has a higher price, 
price it has more weighting that's ridiculous as well the S&P is market cap based it's such a better indice so I'll give you the rant there too and I'll go along with you on it I have no use for the Dow Jones Industrial Average whatsoever either and if you look at the S&P 500 index it is still almost a hundred points off of its all-time high there Joel so you're talking still 10 percent down from where it made those highs back in 2007 right I mean so you know keep an eye on the S&P the components they do change them they do you know take things and uh, in and out well, 500 but stocks 500 of them. 500 it's so of them. much more broad based yeah. well, I'm glad you agree with me I agree I, I, every time uh, I agree with you on some stuff anyway I'll agree with you on this one I don't always agree with you but Moving on here, uh, let's talk about Apple because this 435 level you've been talking about, it is critical for the stock to hold this level. I uh, put that double bottom in after the initial earnings decline back in late January on the 25th and the 28th. It has flirted around with this for the last couple of days, got as low as 437.66 a couple of days ago. It's now at 438 again. This head and shoulders pattern we've been talking about here is very foreboding, um, not sure what's going to happen if it breaks through that 435 support right i mean i think the first i mean obviously taking a look at the uh, pre-market activity uh we have just made a low really close to that 437.50 low close to that uh, low that we had on tuesday i mean th those numbers are tough i mean if you try shorten it going through that 435 you might get like two points of happiness and then five points of pain yeah but you know I think the way that I you know would be using it this morning uh, if I tried to trade a four hundred and fifty dollar stock probably gonna be a four hundred dollar stock at the end of the day is you know you just have to pick your points and if you're short and you've been using that as a target you know put your order out of there let it get slammed because you know the way this thing trades here it dips down to 432 433 someone out. comes in to buy someone comes in to buy a couple hundred thousand and then the things back up at you know 438 439 so it's a good number to trade to cover short i don't i don't know if i'd be uh with it coming down here this many times, I'd be trying along there. And the one thing, like we've been saying on the show, is the bogey is the cash. You don't know. They're going to say something probably in the next few weeks about what they're doing with that cash. Obviously, uh, Cook was hinting at the annual meeting about the cash once again. You know something's in the cards there. And when they do do that, it could, well, it depends. If they don't do much with the cash, it could actually sell off on the news. But if they do, you know, something solid where they're giving some, you know, or increasing the dividend or something like that, the stock could pop. So this potential fundamental news that could get you so you got to be somewhat careful if you're obviously uh, trading this stock even on an intraday basis obviously it's safe for intraday but when you're holding it overnight anything can happen they need apple tv i know we've been saying need a that product. for a while but yeah they need a they need a new product because if they're just going to continue with iphone 6 and whatever and yep. ipad mini and ipad super mini and whatever they could come up with they need a new product they need something to uh to yeah, they need company. to run with that Apple TV or something. Like, I always thought Apple might do something. I've talked about this on the show before, too. Like, have, like, a subscription base where you can subscribe to specific channels. It'd be awesome if they could get content and you can say, you know, you can subscribe to, like, ESPN for two bucks a month or whatever. And people would do something like that, um, you know, if you could just uh, subscribe to specific uh cable channels as opposed to having to buy them all because you know when you subscribe to cable 40 bucks a month or whatever you pay 50 bucks a month and you get a bunch of stations you don't watch and you watch basically six or seven stations i think if somebody could come up with a product where they're just selling just one or two specific channels and this is what i thought the apple tv might do but then you got to figure out how to get the content you know they got to buy the content somehow so i don't know that's why you had speculated before that maybe they would you know look at buying a company like a cbs or something just to get content but you know, that's never materialized. You were saying that on the show, uh, obviously, last year. But uh, who knows? You know, obviously, Apple needs to do something. They need to do something with this cash. Let's move on to some of our earnings stocks here, Joel. Best Buy just reported here this morning. It is up over a dollar. Man, everything's, the dog's barking again, man. This thing has just been rocking and rolling here. Uh, they reported earnings at $1.64 versus $1.54. Beat by 10 cents. Revenue is pretty good, too. So Best Buy getting a nice lift here this morning. Yep, uh, just got a spike up here in the pre-market. Just made a high at seventeen sixty. Uh in the past, uh, the stock has had a lot of pops off the open and then given a lot back. So what we need to do is we need to go to the dailies and uh, 
Ooh, look where we're coming into here. We're coming into that double top we had on the 19th and 20th, 1770 and 1776. Haven't quite approached that in the pre-market. Uh, if it gets uh, through there, I don't know how excited I get. There'll probably be some uh, paper uh, sitting around at that $18 level. But this is the real bogey here. Uh, the double top at 1770 and 1776. Yeah, you've got some resistance up there. Bring the pre-market chart back up because initially on this news, it actually sold off. It had a little spike down. You can see there just on the little chart Joel can point out. But uh, 1575, I think we spiked down to on the initial news. So it actually sold off 60, 70 cents when the earnings broke. News algo maybe was wrong on that one. I'm not sure what happened. But about 30 seconds later, pulled around and started a rally. So you did have an initial sell-off. So sometimes there's that head fake, which was that in the case uh, here where there was an initial head fake to sell it off before they started rallying the stock. But it's a lot of air, obviously, below. Hey, what, what's going on with that founder? Is he still kicking around here? To no, buy I, like think it's, I think it's the bucks they put a deadline like on it, and I think the deadline passed, actually. So it doesn't look like Schultz is you know, going to be able to get the money or he's not going to go through with it. So all those rumors that materialized last year, Schultz going to take the company private, Schultz going to take the company private, doesn't look like it's going to materialize now. So now if you're buying the stock as an investment, you're buying that company that obviously we know Joel doesn't like because of the hate blogs he posted on it last year. Year, which actually hey, that's something you got right people. i don't need any more hate mail than i get <laughs> you posted that thing on seeking alpha the best buy that yeah. and when it was up at 22 dollars, saying you know this is a value trap and it was basically going down <laughs> and you had this one dead right everybody everybody commented on your blog and they hated it you got hate emails from that basically everybody coming in they saying, call me anti-american anti-american <laughs> they called you you were right man you were right it's come back quite a bit though now it has bounced back so looking at that whole 17 18. You can see all the memory there. Look between July and October how much the stock traded in between 17 and 18 and a half. So you're coming back in this whole area where we found support before. That area is probably going to provide you some resistance. I don't know exactly where it is in this decimal laden world we trade in, but the whole 18 handle is probably going to be littered with some sellers. I don't think this thing's going to bounce back and be at $25. I still think the model is broken. The store is too big. Amazon sells the stuff online. They can sell it cheaper because they don't have the overhead they don't have the you know the the to uh compete so i think you know best buy long run uh i don't love it short run who the hell knows where it goes but i don't think it's going to get bought out or taken out here now the gap the gap is gapping joel it's gapping up this morning 73 cents against estimates of 71 they increase the annual dividend 60 cents from 50 cents so the gap doing everything right the technicals look a little bit uh, scary on this 34 area, but uh, we'll let you uh, take over here. 34.44 is where uh, the euphoria took it to after the announcement. Uh, since then, it got a dip back down to 33, and now back up at that 34 level. So a lot of a lot of crazy activity here. So let let's go to the daily. I mean, that's always a good indication. Uh, but spikes up here again, uh, up to uh, the $33.80 to $34 level. Uh, I'd have to use that as minor resistance, uh, trading above it right now, but there's probably uh, some sellers in the book there that are going to need to get satisfied on the opening print, those GTC orders. Going out longer term on the gap here, you see these highs here on the weekly chart at 34 so 34 is the bogey. I mean, I'm not going to try and pick a top on this, but uh, playing it from the long side, it dips below 34. I think you might run into some selling. Pressure. I'm going to go a little bit further out than you. If you go back to December 3rd and December the 4th, you had two highs. You had a gap down day on December the 4th where the stock had a high of 34.57 that day. Um, you can't see it on that chart, but if you go back... Uh, 34.57, there you go, you're looking at the gap down day now, see it there on the chart, 34.57 yeah. was the high that day, moved down to 30.53 was the low that day, it was a huge range day, that high of that move, 34.57 was the open, it's a very valid number because if you go the day before you had a high of 34.69, you go the day before you had a high of 34.64, if this thing starts to get above 34, which it is doing in the pre-market, that 34.60 area is enormous, so maybe you get a little initial selling at 34, it starts to take that out, I love that 3460 area. 
couple other stocks to talk about. Groupon obviously had a bad day yesterday, and they're firing the CEO now. Mason is out at Groupon. The stock is lifting a bit here in the pre-market, $4.67, so getting a bit of a lift, but uh, nothing really to write home about. Uh, what I want to just point out about the uh, about the Groupon here is it just got the tar kicked out of it in the pre market. Uh, not really. I can't remember. I think the real low was like around four twenty five or four thirty. Um, traded a lot of volume. The, the stock was down a huge percentage. Uh, and then you come during the, the day session, and uh, you only made a low at four twenty four. So I think the low was in the pre-market was actually lower than that. And the only reason I'm pointing this out is a lot of times these pre-market parameters uh, can really be a good guideline, you know, of, especially off the open, if the stock's going to have a continuation of the down move or get a little bit of a, uh, a rebound. And yesterday, uh, the low turned out to be made in the pre-market and right off the hop, uh, the opening bell. We were talking off the hop about these sell imbalances here, and I want to go through a couple other charts just from yesterday afternoon that sold off. Bring up a chart of Walmart, because Walmart really had a large sell imbalance and really started to get beat up in the last 20 minutes of yesterday. You can see on the chart, it was trading basically up at 3.30. It was trading up at 71.50, and boom, they knocked 70 cents off of the price. I know you see some spike highs there. Those ignore those little spikes on the after hours chart those are just institutional crosses at the end of the day those aren't valid prints but if you look at the colored lines you can see where the prints were really happening and obviously closed on the low of the day from that large sell and balance it was trying to lift a little bit after hours but it's pulling back here with the overall market i mean the market's down nine right now so it's not surprising that walmart's down at least a little bit but relatively speaking it's holding up quite well it's only down 15 cents in the pre-market here because a lot of um, price got priced out of it in the last 20 minutes yesterday when it spiked down from 71.50 to 70.78 in the last 15 minutes. Uh, just for you Walmart traders out there, a lot of support. Uh, three of the last four lows, 70.44 to 70.61, so you are coming in to support. Uh, the only thing I have to say about uh, Walmart uh, from a longer term perspective, I mean, this, the move that this stock had, uh, you know, just since uh, what was it, the Mexican scandal, which was supposed to be bad news. I mean, this is so out of the norm for Walmart that, you know, if you've been holding this stock for a long time, it's just had some amazing gains. And for that, for these gains to, uh, to continue, uh, you know, from 50 to 75, from this thing to go to 75 to 100, I mean, I will uh, walk on my hands across the Ambassador Bridge <laughs> to your house if that happens. It's... I mean, it just... It's just it's just so far out of the norm. It's very difficult for a company the size of Walmart to appreciate and continue to appreciate or double, you know. And basically, you know, you're up 30, 40% here in the last year, like Joel was saying. For that to go up another 30, 40%, you're talking about, you know, a huge market cap company, um, a company that's just enormous. It doesn't have, you know, it's not like it's expanding. This is a cash cow Walmart more than anything. The only way this company, you know, really goes up 40, 50% is with multiple expansion. And you don't, I don't think Walmart's going to come back to these PEs of 20, 30, you know. It's down, you know, it's a cash cow. It's got those multiples down in the low teens now, and that's probably where it belongs. So it's very difficult for a company like that to continue to just rise. So I think I agree with you. I don't think we're going to see 100 bucks on this thing at the end of next year. So your upside probably somewhat limited, you know. You can not, it could go up, you know, it could it go up a bit, but I just don't think you're going to see a continuation of last year's move. So I tend to agree with you on that one, too. Oh, we're agreeing a lot today. This wow, is oh, my God. <laughs> Time to get long Walmart. Yeah, probably. When we're both <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Anyways, um, looking at some of these financials, though, because this is what uh, is weak here this morning. You have a lot of your European financials are trading down. Deutsche Bank is down over 3 bucks here. If you bring up the pre-market chart, it'll show you. Deutsche Bank down 3 bucks. Barclays BCS is down 7% here. A lot of weakness over in Europe. You know that's going to filter over into our financials. We can see it in the pre-market with most of our financials trading down already. So relatively speaking, I would expect your financials to be weak compared to uh, some of your other stocks. Well, let's look at the market one last time. And uh, we're going to move on here Joel let's look at the overall market what do you think uh, obviously we got up there you were talking on the charts that we made potentially that 1524 area is starting to look huge now with yesterday's sell-off the continuation of the sell-off here this morning um, what's your take 
Uh, well, that fifteen twenty four fifty uh, Monday and Wednesday's highs, uh, those definitely are numbers of the past. Maybe bring uh, up the chart so we can see those numbers. Let's go and just uh, okay. There you go. Right here, right on the nose, man. I mean, you can't get it any better than that. Actually, the fifteen twenty four fifty high uh, was on Monday. Uh, you came right back to that level on Thursday. Double top. That's yeah, double top. Also that fifteen thirty above that. So that that's your bogey. But that's the thing of the past here. We had the week close. Uh, notice we only came back up to the settlement price after that week close. Our settlement was thirteen and a quarter. This is uh, the trading that took. Uh, uh, this is right on the close. It opened up at that four thirty open, which uh, well actually the five fifteen open and kept going down. Uh, but it's hard. What people want to know about is support, Dennis. And uh, besides the uh, pre-market low of fifteen oh three and a quarter, what's in there between that and the low fourteen nineties? Yeah, I mean, the... we blew up. Yeah, we blew through that area before. I don't see much down until Wednesday's Globex low at fourteen ninety, but it's really going to take a thrashing to get us down there. Very hard here. We're fifteen oh five. We're kind of in the middle. You know, you know, you've got resistance up there in the fifteen nineteen, fifteen twenty area. So fifteen points up from here, you got some great resistance. Fifteen points down from here, you got some good support. So you're kind of sitting in the middle of a vacuum area. So it's very difficult to make a trade here. It's almost like a coin flip. Obviously, you know, you had some follow through yesterday. Maybe you know they get some bottom pickers coming in, trying to pick bottoms here again. But really, you're right. There's no real support until you get down to the low fourteen ninety where we made multiple lows there a while ago. So it's a tricky market to trade here. It's going to be a tricky Friday, guys, and we're probably going to be volatile too. One thing I do find interesting just before we close the show is the gold stocks aren't up very much. We've had a pretty steep sell-off here basically from yesterday afternoon and obviously this morning, and gold's only trading up just a buck here. So really uh, kind of quiet that uh, gold's not uh, getting a little more lift here on this. Uh, one intermediate number I want to give besides the close of 1513 and a quarter. We got Thursday's low at uh, uh, 1508.75, and that coincides real nicely with the uh, intraday 50% retracement. Uh, so if you are playing along off the hop, you get back up the 1508.50 area, you might want to look at that uh, to let it go. Or if you're looking to initiate a short off the open, uh, that might be the level to look at. Well, that's our broadcast uh, for today. We covered a whole spectrum, and uh, we'll be back with you on Monday.